Jello, everyone. This is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna make your Jello jiggle. And oh, let me just do a quick Google search to see if that's. Oh yeah, that's something disgusting. I'm sorry for saying that to everybody. Here in After Effects, what we're doing is we are taking rigid shape layers and we're giving them this nice organic wobbling, just like you would see with this disgusting food item. I think it's called Jello Salad. I don't eat it myself, and I look down on its creation. So that's just a fun fact about me and Jello. Just like making real Jello, though, this is very simple. It uses very few ingredients, and you really only need what's in the box, by which I mean what's in After Effects. You don't need any inverse kinematic IK things. You don't need any physics simulations like Newton. Everything we do is going to be made with stuff just in After Effects. So if you've not gone out and invested the time in learning those other methods, don't worry about it. This is a, a simple homemade recipe that you're going to enjoy. And let's start it off by making a new project for me, just opening After Effects for you and making a new composition. So we're working at 1920 by 1080, duration four seconds, frame rate 29.97, okie dokie. And we're going to call this composition that we make, we're going to call this the lump. So we're going to start by making one lump of jello and then duplicating that so we don't have to do as much work. And to make the lump of jello, we're just going to use shape layers. So I'm going to use a rectangle, I think. I'm just double click on the old rectangle and I'm going to sort of build by numbers. I would recommend for you to do your designing ahead of time. This is one I've prepared earlier, then I take it out of the oven. Ooh, how impressive. But these are numbers and things I've figured out beforehand. I would recommend for you drawing this stuff out and, and doing that kind of thing. But for me, I'm gonna make a rectangle of such and such size, and then we just add an ellipse to this, and then making an ellipse that, you know, fits in with that, so that it creates this fun little silo shape. And then uh, we don't need a stroke, we do need the fill, and that's it. We've got this gross green looking silo, awesome. We're gonna call that, I guess, the mass of the jello. I'm gonna duplicate that and create a layer that we will call the shine of the jello, because this is gonna be that, that little highlight, which is actually just made of a stroke. So to that end, we don't need this fill, we do need this stroke. The stroke color is going to be based on the fill color with less saturation, more brightness. And we don't need all these lines to be stroked. We just want the outside. So we're going to add a merge paths like this. So merge them together. And then I'm going to add a trim paths because we don't need all of this to be uh, to have the stroke on it. So we're just going to trim that up, trim it up. Maybe like 15% of it is good. I'm going to use the offset here to offset it uh, kind of like there. That looks good. And then I'm just going to shrink these down. So shrink this down to like 250, 250 like this. So this is going to allow me to animate that offset later, uh, which, uh, you know what, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But for now, this stroke should be rounded caps. Awesome. So we've got we've got the shininess. We've got the mass of the jello. Now we need those gross looking candies in there. So uh, those I would make out of some rectangles, I guess. And, uh, you know, these rectangles are, are going to be, you know, kind of tiny. This is 20 by 20. Yes, fill, no stroke. Fill color is going to be like a like a bright pinky kind of thing. Awesome. Maximum roundness, please. And then we're just really like making these bean looking things. So one of them is going to be that big. I'm going to duplicate it. One of them is going to be half as big. And then uh, I'm just moving them, nudging them away from each other. Calling up their rotation like this. 45 maybe a minus 45 like this. So we've got these gross candies floating around in there. And what you might do is alter their opacity a little bit, or maybe you'll stick them behind this green thing, but this makes it look like they're kind of floating in there and nothing will sell that better than over the length of this animation, altering their position and rotation, setting keyframes, and I'd say by about two seconds, I want the little one to go down a little bit, I want the big one to go down twice as much, and I would like them both to rotate just a little bit like that. So over the course of this animation, they're going to be like floating and settling to the bottom of this jello because I think that's thoroughly gross. Now we can take this lump 
and we can make the lump bend. We are ready to get into the meat and potatoes and other food elements. Man, I'm hungry. I'm just gonna take this lump, drag it onto the new comp. And I've created a new composition, the same size and duration of that other one. And out here is where we're gonna put the old pin tool on this thing. So click the puppet pin tool, a wonderful tool for deforming things. It can get a little sketchy sometimes, so we're gonna try to work with it, not against it. Once you've selected a layer, you've selected your puppet pin tool, you may come out here and click on some stuff as much as you'd like. But I'm gonna call up a grid first, just so I'm very accurate with my pins. I'm gonna stick one pin down here, and that's a good spot for it. As soon as you click, it makes this grid. This, well, it's not really a grid. It's a bunch of triangles. It makes a bunch of triangles. You see, I've set like a thousand triangles and there's so many settings to get into. You get your expansion, which is uh, expanding sort of the influence of these things. I'm gonna be just setting pins, one at the bottom, one sort of in the center of this mass up here. And then I'm gonna try to get one that's about halfway in between like there. And what these do is they stick to the mesh. And you can see just with me dragging this around urgh, like a monster, uh, they allow you to deform things with this mesh. So having more triangles will increase the resolution of that deformity. And I recommend a fairly high number, but it can be machine intensive. So just keep that in mind. And it's not deforming this with vectors. It's deforming it uh, with pixels. So all that beautiful vector information, that infinitely scalable stuff that we did in here, uh, forget it. I'm glad I drew it fairly large because now that we're using the pin tool, things are gonna get stretchy and warpy and aliasy, and it's not gonna be too pretty, but it's not gonna be very noticeable. And you'll see why in a minute. Now I need a better way to control these things because right now in this mesh, in the deform, in these puppet pin tools, I can only change their position. And what I wanna do is have them bend in a nice arc without having to spend too much time futzing around with, well, I'll move, I'll move this one pin over here and then try to, try to match the curve a little bit with this one. No, 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 I will, I will not be doing that. No, thank you. What I'm gonna do is use a bunch of null objects to control these. Also, cause I don't like coming in here and touching these things. I want every, I want all my controls to be visible and easy to manipulate. So first I'm gonna take these keyframes off. I don't need them. And then I'm gonna layer new and make a new null object. And this is gonna be called, I don't know, lump control one. And then I need lump controls two and three. Awesome. And I want these lump controls to be exactly where these pins are. So I've got pin one, uh, pin two, which is at the top and pin three. So let me just switch those around. So I'm gonna copy the position information of pin one, copy, and put it into the position of lump control one, and then copy from you know the middle pin to the middle control, and then from the top pin to the top control. Awesome. You'll also notice I'm not parenting things because the relationship needs to be that these pins are controlled by these controls. All right, simple enough. And these controls, I want to be parented to each other. And that's because I'm gonna take those, I'm gonna rotate them. And when I put keyframes on the rotation, slide those ahead to 10 seconds, I want them to deform in this nice uh, arc. It's very, very graceful, very predictable arc. So let me just deform those like this. I'm gonna ease those. So the motion is gonna be like this. They're gonna start bent and end vertical like this. For these to control these, what I need to do is use an expression because if I just uh, hold down Alt, click on this, and then call up the position here, let's say I just linked position to position. I go like this. That is gonna be a big oopsie. And that is because these positions are now relative to each other. So its position is zero comma minus 178. That wouldn't make any sense to the pin tool. We need to give it information that makes sense. So what I would like to do though, is write an expression to help it make sense. So I'm gonna start by making a variable and that's gonna be L, which in my mind stands for layer. So L equals, and the layer is going to equal 
for this one anyway, uh, lump control three. That's the layer we're interested in looking at. Put a semicolon down there to say we've said everything we want to about L. And then we're going to say L dot to world, capital W on world, and then in some brackets, L dot anchor point, capital P on point, and that should do it. So what it's saying is don't look at don't look at the values of lump control three, look at its values in relation to the world. And the world in this case is this frame dimension. So what that does is it puts that pin control right there and that's working out very wonderfully. So duplicate that and alt click down here, paste down here, cool. And this is of course gonna look at control two and then this one here is gonna look at control one, and that should do it. So if we play this back, look at that sweet bend. And we can use these layers just to control this. I find a lot easier than we could if we were using the pin tool alone. We can still apply expressions like the inertia bounce that we're gonna do to that pin tool, but using rotation makes a lot more logical sense to me because that's what we're doing. We want this nice arc. So bend them in a predictable arc, right? And I said inertia bounce. So it's time to go to the good folks at Gray Machine. Just Google inertia bounce, inertial bounce, After Effects, and you'll come to Gray Machine and you can copy their beautiful expression. Very often used. If you're not using it, you should be. Um, it's wonderful stuff. So copy that. And then we are going to alt click on the rotations and paste it in here. Yes, indeed. Good stuff. Make sure I got the rotation. There you go. Good stuff. So now it is going wob, 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 wob. Perfect. We're nailing it. It's working out. And there's one little detail that I want to add now as well. See this shine that we put on here? Wouldn't it be great if that reacted to the shape changing here? So what we're going to do is go into the lump, go into the shine, hit UU to Uber frame all the stuff we've changed. Uh, put a keyframe here on the offset and alt click on it as well to put that inertia bounce on there. And we've got one keyframe, which is where we know it should be here at 10 seconds. Well, where should it be uh, before that? Well, it should be slid down kind of like that. So it's like the light is hitting that side and then jerp kind of like that. And we just need to ease this first keyframe hitting F9 or, you know, right click keyframe, easy ease. Probably should have mentioned that before, but it didn't seem important. But yeah, so it's gonna do that at the same time that this is doing this and it works out perfectly. Congratulations, you have made one lump. Uh, this is not lump two, this is lump in motion. So take your lump in motion, put it into a new composition. This is gonna be, this composition is going to be uh, the full jello. Uh, please never Google uh, that expression, uh, the full jello. It's probably some gross thing. I don't, I don't wanna know. But here in the full jello, we are going to duplicate uh, a lump in motion and we're gonna just offset it a bunch, duplicate, offset it a bunch and you know going the other way you know same thing duplicate them and uh, you know moving them over like that those look evenly spaced enough put them down here cool and if we play that back wob 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 it looks kind of like a full thing of jello wubbing around. Uh, let's see, I'd also like to have the ones that are kind of on the edge, have them go down a little bit, kind of like that, kind of make a, a rounded uh, bump of these things. I totally know what the shape of jello is supposed to be, but kind of like that, fwub, fwub, fwub. Uh, a detail we can put in here is something like a, a plate under these things. So maybe use the old rectangle powers hit UU, call up all the things that are different about it. Don't need that stroke. Uh, do, 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 do. Maybe like this. Wee. Maybe like this. That's good. That's good. Uh, the rectangle should be rounded. Definitely rounded. Awesome. And then move that down here like this. 
You can still see though, some of these ends are kind of sticking out. Uh, I would just use a mask to make that go away. So let's stop looking at that stupid grid and I'll just go, hey, let's put a mask around like this. Do you have a little lump sticking out? Not anymore, nope. How about you, you got any? Yeah, let's get rid of that. Absolutely, and this last one for sure, gone. And that just trims it up very neatly. I think that's very good. So now we've got the full jello. Put that into a new comp, holy moly. I'm just gonna hit tab here and show you, you know, we're just got so many, this flow chart, just so many layers of this stuff, but whatever, who cares? So we've got the full jello into its own composition. This is where I would put in a new background of some kind, like a solid, neat and uh, then call up the position, set some keyframes. 10 frames is the magic time where uh, we're gonna have this thing come in. I'm gonna scale this down a little bit, have it enter like so. Look at those positions, maybe have it ease itself in. So yeah, it's slurp, and then it just wobbles, just sits there and wobbles. Um, there are some limitations to using the puppet pin tool, I will say, but this is a great way to deform uh, vector artwork or any artwork, really, pixel artwork. Uh, do it up. You can make assets in Illustrator and Photoshop, come in here and deform them. And if you want them to wobble like jello, now you know how. So this has been Evan Abrams teaching you how to make things jiggle like jello in After Effects. If you've enjoyed learning this thing, please subscribe to this channel. Talk about motion graphics and After Effects on here. Hopefully you've enjoyed yourself. Uh, if you have questions about this technique, please let me know in the comments. I try to get back to them when I can. And if you want to get your hands on the project file to see what the guts of this thing look like, then uh, there's links to that. It's available at evanabrams.com. If you want to ask questions about After Effects and motion graphics in general, hit me up on Twitter at EC Abrams or on the Facebook page. Links to all that stuff in the description. Also in the description, you will find the expressions that we used in this uh, particular tutorial. It should all be listed down there for you to copy and paste at your leisure so you don't have to worry about typing or reading me type. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this useful, please uh, share it with people, subscribe to this channel, and if you subscribe, I'll see you here for our next tutorial. Thanks again, and have a nice day.